Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm gonna paint a new portrait today. Okay, I got here. I'm gonna start painting with bristle brushes. Okay, some people are, are been asking me about uh, the brushes I use. It's just simple bristle brushes. This one is really cheap. The only thing that I like about this one, this this one is you know is the, the the hair is really long. I prefer that. And I got some soft synthetic brushes for blending, especially like this one and this one, and even a bigger one like this one. Okay. I'm gonna start just blocking with a dark color. Oh, I got here titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, uh, lizard crimson, cobalt blue, raw umber, and ivory black. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick up just raw umber. Let's see the top, the bottom, a little bit of the shoulder. The size of the head is going to be around here. I think that's going to be okay. Yep. I'm just going to paint the shadow of the hair and the shadow of the face. This is just raw umber. And squinting and trying to copy just this shadow here as a flat shape okay we're not about to draw the face the features are always measuring eyebrows for example eyebrows here from the eyebrows to the nose from the nose to the chin okay okay and squinting I see a shadow there for the eyes the eyebrow I'm checking the shape here and how tilted is the nose okay I use a brush on, with my left hand to put it on top of the photograph and check out how tilted is the nose while I'm doing this with my left hand I'm drawing here with my right I'm painting with my right hand okay I'm gonna light up the color just orange a little crimson okay I think I need more red but I need more raw umber hello Larry hello Bob hello Monique Cadmium red, and let's see, shadow on the shoulder, shadow on the chest, a little bit here, shadow on the face. white more orange and a touch of cameo and it's crimson okay I need another brush to paint the background uh, I like the color here from the photograph, but I want to create a bit more contrast here. I'm gonna mix just black and white to get some gray grayish background. Nice. 
Okay, I think that's good enough. And this is where you can see easily the contour of the face. Okay. Yeah, Monique. I mean, it's not. It's kind of pretty close, but the the, the image that we draw, uh, she got the eyes open. In this photograph, she have the eyes closed. Hello, Vertha. Cambium orange, raw umber, a touch of red. A little bit of blue to knock down the color. A little bit of black. Better, it's gonna be better. To knock it down faster. Quinton and comparing Okay, I need another brush, a little bit of blue white. Just cover blue and white. Okay. Need another brush. Uh, this one, touch of pure orange. Just a touch. Okay. Want to warm up some some areas? Just a little bit. This is a soft brush. Okay, after using this uh, synthetic, it's kind of cheap, you know. After using a little bit, look how it gets. How how look at the shape. It looks like a mop. Okay, but when is when these brushes are just new, they are pretty pointy. But they got to this shape. They say kind of uh, kind of fast. You hear the dog? That's my neighbor's dog. <laughs> he got into the house.
I'm using a light uh, blue for highlights because it creates a nice contrast with the skin color. But it's not going to stay the same color. Obviously, I got to adjust it and just kind of lay down a little bit of color and values. Okay. But that's kind of the blocking stage. I mean, like a value blocking stage. What I want is all the colors here and the values. Hello Fuzzy, hello Brick Kit, hello Smart Kids. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hello Juan. Juan is asking me, do you agree with the idea of warm shadows and cool lights? Yeah, hello Charu. Uh, you know, it's a rule more than an idea. Sometimes just the color is more that contrast is more visible when there's a lot of light and shadow but we kind of apply that all the time because that happens everywhere i see everything that we see is always has color and temperature okay as painter we can just exaggerate that and we can even sometimes exaggerate that a lot okay uh, but what happens with color that we are not able to judge color alone we are not able to just just say color say this color is just warm and cool okay that's easy to say when you see orange and blue warm and cool okay but it's not always like that sometimes a color is neutral that means it's no warm it's no cool but it can become cool or warmer depending on the color that's next to that one. In, in that case is when the things start to complicate a little bit because sometimes we don't see the difference. And but we gotta pay attention to what happens always with color. What the color change depending on the environment the painting and the color that next to this one if I make this cooler let's say I'm gonna make this warmer by contrast and without doing that actually just by making a color cooler the next color could become in comparison to that one a little bit uh, warmer okay but that you know that, that's something that we're gonna try and that's kind of slightly variations when we paint One second, please. And the first, the best, the, f the best way to practice that is when we paint landscapes because we can see pretty clearly when we paint a landscape, especially not a gray, a grayish landscape. You said landscape when you go out, and it's pretty sunny. The day is pretty sunny. We can see pretty clearly that the lights are warm and the shadows are cool and something more that the warmer light is bouncing back on the shadows okay that means that we always have some uh, on the shadows a combination between warm and cool colors okay it's not just about warm and cool it's always about warm cool colors and the reflected light and the same way you move a color from being pre-saturated to gray down the same way you move that temperature contrast to make it really, really 
like contrasty, like yellow and violet. Okay, or like a let's say a knockdown orange and a knockdown blue. Okay, hello Charu Jackie on Facebook, hello Tina. Mixing some pink. of blue, Naples yellow, and I want to get some greenish color. It's not a pure greenish color, no, I got the same brush, and with the same brush I'm mixing the lights, orangey lights, greenish lights. Now I'm going to blend again. One second before the, my brush, I got my brush here from painting. Okay, here it is. Feel free to ask me any question, okay? Tomorrow I'm going to paint another commission. Yeah. brush I need some light blue Soften some brush strokes. I want to soften some edges. Okay, I need 
smaller brush. Okay, and this one here. Okay, and one more. Okay, this one. And this one, I think, is gonna be okay. Okay, let's see. I got basically the shape of the, the face. Okay. I think the drawing is kind of close. Not perfect, but good enough, you know. Okay. I don't see that something is kind of pretty off. That's pretty good. Now, I want to start thinking paying attention to to balance out you know soft and sharp edges for example on the nose you know I've got a sharp edge in there I need another brush okay this one I think yeah a little bit of a different greens on the raw umber Okay, I need to sharpen the nose here, this edge. Okay, I'm gonna soften this edge until I see it uh, more clearly to be able to add some definition, you know, but not now. see I'm trying to get some sharp edges here here soft here okay here in the eye the same here okay now here a little bit just there I need some black and a different green. Some just a little bit. Okay. sharp there and here too okay now what about nose nostril here here little bit up the nose here no no wow that's gonna be too big a little bit up and 
there. I want to cut this like cutting something with scissors just to see a really sharp edge there to make the nose pop Hello GSG, G. hello Rose27 uh, what, what things could improve if my painting look cartoonish and not like real I paint with acrylics Okay, I would say, you know, pick up, uh, use some retarded something that slow down the drying because with acrylics it's pretty difficult and this thing about cartoonish is just about ages you're dealing with a problem with ages and that's pretty common with acrylics you know because they dry fast and and I will tell you you know I think there's a brand it's called golden gold golden acrylics one of my patrons told me that he he used those ones and they dry like oil paints because to work with ages you need to soften a lot a lot of edges okay and that's not gonna be i don't think that's gonna be possible with acrylics unless you wanna just want the whole challenge of painting and and trying to blend at the same time which is possible but it requires a lot of effort and sometimes at, at the same time you're not dealing with values and all of those things i think it's just too much uh, if you don't like the oil paints, like for any reason, maybe you could you could try uh, what a mixer for oil paints. Uh, it could be a, a solution, but the thing is that the only way to not make to get a portrait that to stop uh, painting look cartoonish is working on the edges, soften a lot of edges. Okay. As a practice, I can tell you, make a painting that looks blurry, out of focus, completely out of focus. And then, and that's going to be the first step to try to control ages. Okay. For example, if, I, if on this painting I start adding sharp edges or even lines, like imagine that's a drawing. The point that we think that we represent reality by using lines, okay, and that's the beginning of a drawing, obviously, because uh, that's the beginning. At some point, we get rid of lines, we move to values and soft transitions, no lines anymore. Lines is just for the blocking stage. Uh, Virik is asking me how to get good portrait background. It's complementary color good. Yeah, yeah, so that's, a good, that's a good option. Okay, you gotta think what you want. Okay, maybe you want just value contrast. Value contrast, it means this, like let's say my my face is kind of orangey and my background could be like just orange but a darker one dark orange in that case it's kind of there is no color contrast it's just the same color just moving from lighter to darker okay and now my face is orange you want to use the complementary color that would be blue what's going to happen that you're going to create more color because one color is pushing the other one and both you know kind of enhance together 
they saturate each other a little bit. If that is that what you want, that's what you gotta do. Sometimes we want that because let's say that my painting, my portrait is kind of bare, opaque. I don't like it. Let's say you know I don't like it, and I'm thinking how how I'm gonna just make this painting colorful without going on the process of painting everything again. And for me, that would be uh, adding contrast with the background. Okay. Making the background more bluish to complementary contrast. That's going to add more color. Okay. And definitely, that's, that's you know, and or well, maybe you got too much color. And you wanna just don't don't want, don't wanna add more color to the painting. Then you can go with a background with the same color, just a little bit knocked down, or even more colorful background, which is gonna make by contrast, it's gonna knock down the the color you got there. But uh, I have seen so many backgrounds, you know, from from really dark greenish classical background to. Uh, yellowish, yellow, orange, pure, you know, color backgrounds, which work pretty good. Okay, now if you, that one thing, if you work with a background that is, is just too separated from the, from the color, from the color subject, you gotta echo that color on the painting. That means that you gotta pick up a little bit of that background and put it on the painting. Like for me, this is this is light blue, for example. I pick up the light blue and I can put it here. Some touches here and there. But definitely I'm, I'm thinking about adding some light blue to the highlights. Okay, let's see more questions. I love questions. Okay, I like this way of painting. Already learned a lot from it. That's Ver Verta Hop that's writing this. Unfortunately, I can't speak English very well. Okay. Uh, hello, Cisarte. Hello, Kevin. Oh my god, I got the wrong reference. Yeah, painting for another photograph. Bah. Okay, I want to try to change that. <laughs> You know, I picked up this, this photograph first to paint, and then I changed it to the other one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to change it. But you, if, you, if you will check out the description box, you're going to find the photograph there. Okay. I'm going to see if I'm able to change the thumbnail. Oh, change the photograph here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking about it on here. Where is the photograph? Where is the photograph? Here it is. Okay, here's the photograph. Oh, thank you. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> you know, thank you. Thank you so much. See more white, a little bit of yellow. I need to paint the highlight here. Okay, let, let's read more. 
more questions? Rose 27. All oils are like slow drying butter that can be blended easily after the fact. Uh, color of is not so true, but can blend with soap brush as you go if you are fast. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have tried blending with acrylics, and it's possible, you know, but. I think it's up to you uh, because it takes a lot of time you know it's pretty stressful when you're trying to blend to get edges especially for a portrait I, I prefer I love acrylics yeah? I, I prefer oil and but uh, when I want to paint with acrylics yeah I, you know I gotta get used to it I gotta just adapt myself to to that That's gonna be difficult anyway. See a little bit of the face here. I see a reflected light a little bit here. Mix blue and yellow, Naples yellow. Hello, Gary. Monique is asking me, uh, have you ever painted too thick, thickly where you lost control and had to remove paint? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah a few times. I uh, tried to 
you know what I what I do all the time I try to correct all the mistakes just by adding more paint and kind of I do the same when I draw I got a drawing channel you know in the drawing channel you're gonna see that I don't use the eraser that much it's not because I don't want to it's it's just because I got used to this idea about correcting by adding more 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 I think that, that came from all your paint you know not by wipe, wiping off but if I got to some point that I want to darken up or light up a color and it's not able because the paint is really thick that every time that I lay down more paint it's kind of vanish on the paint obviously I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove it but that happened to me maybe a couple of times in years yeah, but that's okay you know erasing wiping off is perfect it's something that we have to do uh, uh, you know it's just like sometimes we got used to for any reason maybe it was one of my teachers maybe it was that you know i remember one of my teachers drawing the drawing teacher saying hey nobody's gonna nobody's gonna use a an eraser no one yeah. okay and and then i did the same a couple of times with some students it is it is amazing because I remember being in the class just there just everybody was was drawing and then everybody was speaking out loud you know because it's kind of free it's not like a, it's not a library and I said okay the next practice for the next practice no, nobody's gonna use an eraser no one and the classroom was just quiet Everybody was so fo focused on the drawing. And I thought, okay, you know, that's, this is pretty good. Because they're pushing themselves. The, 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 the idea of knowing that they're not going to be able to to erase, okay, put them in a position that they have to be pretty careful on every brush stroke. And I remember one of my teachers doing that on the class. And I remember being that straightforward, like, why? I mean... I want to be able to erase, uh, just draw or paint, just not, not, not having all this pressure on me, but I think it's good. You know, those exercises are exercises that they're not continuous because it could be pretty stressful. Okay, but it's just the purpose of an exercise. It's an, it's an exercise for maybe once a month. That's it, no more enough for to to kind of put a hundred percent on the on, on the painting or, or drawing okay and maybe because of that I don't erase that much I'm not saying that I'm not making mistakes it's different I'm saying that I'm choosing a different way for to correct my mistakes okay it's not like it's, it's just like when I see uh, for example I have I have tried a digital painting for a bit I'm thinking like draw more but the thing is that when I see my son uh, my daughter just painting with a tablet or the computer they the, the t <laughs> on the keyboard they pick they keep pressing ctrl C all the time all the time come to see it. oh my god and I got crazy about that and I don't do that you know and then my son is like why don't you erase and say I don't know I, you know I just prefer put more 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 layers on top but that's not the way to work he told me that like no no you gotta, you gotta erase and then do it again and as I said you know it's for me it's, it's too annoying just going over that, erasing, making a trace down something, erasing again and again. Oh, I got just, you know, I got to a point that you know what? I'm not gonna do more of this. And my son is, hey, but you gotta do it that way. I mean, there's no other way to do it. There's always more more ways to do it. <laughs> just the thing is that they kind of are na native digital, let's say, you know. 
I'm moving from being traditional painter to digital painting. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that moving. I know what I, I what I, I, I tried, and when I try, I, okay, I got more of my rules or the things that I use from traditional painting to digital painting. Now, the same applies for everything, and I would say everybody's free to correct their mistakes in the, the way that you think they are more appropriate to you. But I would say at the same time, try one day just the full challenge of kind of you know, not erasing at all, just fixing the mistakes. Even when you got a lot of paint or, or drawing, it just by putting more paint on top or moving the paint with the brush. Because it's not about just laying down more paint. We move the paint with the brush. Okay, here, for example, in this area, that would be something that I could wipe off. Because this, this area is pretty dark. And I'm working with a, a lighter color. And it's really easy to pollute my lighter color. And I could be here like more, more than maybe that... that spending more time here more than I want and for this you will say you know what I'm gonna wipe off this and repaint it again let's see more questions let's read more questions uh, Nice softening and those edges on the lower lip. Uh, thank you. Can you talk about oil medium? Okay, I don't use too much oil medium. If I could say what to use, you know, linseed oil. That's the one I have used a lot. I don't use it now. I have used a lot of linseed oil. And I like it. I like it. Another medium that I like is liquid. But it looks like I, I, say, I, I say I like it. But maybe I don't like it enough because I don't use it. Uh, I'm not saying that maybe I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna use it ever. Maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. Who knows? Okay, let's see. Uh, I use oil, Rose 2017, I use oils all my life, but have played with blocking acrylic a lot. And it's like color get gesso, that is good for the first layer too, but thin oils over the top is what really makes it look great. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, hello, Vesper. Vesper is saying digital is not really like physical painting is. Yeah, 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 I know. Rose 2017 painting lowers your, your blood pressure. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, for sure here on YouTube, it doesn't do that. Hello, Kathy Fleming. Hello, Bo Kellyn saying hi from Holland. Very nice.
<clears throat> Let's see. Juan Sanchez asking me. Oh, another question here. You chip the painting with the mixed colors on the right. Yeah, I mean this is not a commission. This is just some an image that I found on Pinterest. And when I sell the paintings, yes, I just send them away. It depends, you know. I have I have sell, uh I have sold some paintings here on YouTube, and mostly my patrons are the ones that bought me the paintings. And since they are painters too, they want to see, you know, the palette on the side. I sold one of these paintings to uh, a friend and the first thing he did, pick up some scissors, and he cut the palette and throw it away. And you know, the, you can see the different point of view from from a painter and from somebody that just wants to see the paint, the face, not the palette. You know. uh, I love to keep the palette with my paintings. From time to time I see them and it kind of reminds me about the process. Because I see the colors here, here. That's pretty nice for me. But we, we all don't share the same taste for things. Uh, the photograph, you see in the photograph, there's a sharp edge here on the corner. You know, I'm not painting the sharp edge. I'm trying to keep it soft around just to make this sharp edge just pop. What is the advantage of painting on a treated canvas versus on a hard panel surface? Monique is asking that. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know. Like, if I think about the process, I think it's the same. When I, If I think about how the painting is going to stay on time, I think it's better some panel, something on stick. Something stiff, yeah. Because you know, the the oil paint it dries really hard, and the canvas kind of move all the time. And it is if just it's pretty stiff, it's gonna stay more time without any any change 
and that means that that's going to prevent the painting from cracking over the time. The stable surface for all your paints are just the stiffer ones. Good, you know, like good, good is something that's, that's pretty good, it's pretty stiff. The canvas is always going to move. And, it, and when the oil paint dries really hard, hard rock, and the canvas moves, you know, it's pretty kind of logical what's going to happen when you got something flexible. That's the canvas with something really hard, which is, which is the, you know, the paint. Some cracking is going to happen anyway. Thinking about that, I could say, you know, some panels, wood. But thinking about the process, like what I'm doing here, you know, I don't feel a difference when I paint on something, a panel or, or a canvas that just you know, stretch it. Like this one, this one stretch it, you know, it's, it's flexible, you see? What makes difference for me when the, uh, when the process? See more questions. Hello, Ruta. Joseph. Hello, Ka Kathy. Is in so what is the fourth color on from the top of your palette? Okay, I got titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red. Oh, I see. There's a little a lot of light on my palette. Yeah. Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Rachel. She's saying hi from England. That's pretty nice. Juan Sanchez is asking me. Let me scroll up. Okay, where's the question? Where's the question? Let me see it. Uh, oh, what do you prefer regarding the size of the head you paint? Smaller, equal, or bigger? Or I prefer just. Uh, you know, everybody says. And uh, it's true that when we, you paint a face that's bigger than the real life, real size, you're going to have a lot of problems. That's going to be pretty difficult. And I tried that and I tested that and that's, you know, I got a lot of problems. Now, but what I do when I paint here, I got always the photograph next to my canvas, the same size. Okay. That it's gonna that give me an advantage. That give me an advantage even to try a bigger portrait. But the thing, the problem when, uh, about having the photograph next to my canvas, I got the photograph on my on my screen here on my monitor. The thing is that I'm not gonna be able to have a really really big unless I get a, a what a 50 inches screen. That would be too much. Yeah. Read more questions. Oh. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, do you have subtitles for the videos on Patreon? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's something that YouTube, uh, like kind of, uh, it's a YouTube thing. I'm, I'm not doing. I'm not, yeah, I saw the other day one of my videos, and I was just checking those soft, soft titles, and yeah, yeah, there are soft, soft titles. I don't know if all of them. 
I don't know, but the thing is that I saw and they kind of have like to switch the subtitles to, I don't know, a hundred languages. I saw that I don't know how to do that or maybe I did something when I was playing with the setups on YouTube that allows that but at the same time I gotta say it's not something that I have seen on every one of my videos and I didn't, I didn't even check out all of the videos to, to see see that but like I said before it looks like it's a YouTube uh, option YouTube does that I think that's gonna be easy, easy to see you know pick up any video on my channel and see if you got so you can get some subtitles Mixing camera red with listen crimson. I'll put it here. Just a touch to get some to warm up the shadow a bit. A little bit of pink, a little bit of orange, light orange, light pink. again a little bit of pink again I'm gonna soften this eyebrow. And this eye too. A bit more, let's see.
soft, sharp, soft. Let's see the eyebrows. And I'm gonna add all those eyelashes just a little bit, okay? Too much eyelashes, too many eyelashes to be able to copy them. Maybe they look pretty good in the photograph, maybe they, they're not gonna look that good on the painting. Okay, it's gonna be light blue. More light blue. Or white. Okay, I think that could be enough. Not, what do you think? I think an hour and 12 minutes. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Mervat. Okay. 
Nikolai Kalev saying, do your children want to follow your steps? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, do you have, uh, yes, I mean, my daughter, she's, stu she's studying animation. Uh, my son, he still doesn't want to do, doesn't know what to do. Does. And, yeah, to know what's going to happen, I don't know. But, okay, I'm going to zoom in just to show you a little bit of details. You see the colors I got on the skin? The yellowish touch, yellowish, light blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of pink. The mouth is, uh, I'm just keeping a sharp edge, uh, basically just here. And it's soft here. Soft and it's pretty soft here. Lost, basically lost. much I, I should soft this oh I need to okay that's better I'll soften it here It's basically just black and white. Looks like this because you know ivory black has a little bit of blue. Has like a, a drop of blue. Okay. Mm. Trying to separate the nose to make the nose pop, okay? Keep it sharp here, sharp, the soft, soft, sharp, sharp, lost.
squinting, trying to see all those shadows, mitons, without the tears. Okay, I think, I think that's it. No, I don't want to get into more details. I think it's a good time to stop. Because the more I paint, the more I see things, the more I... Uh, and I want just, you know, this balance between softness and sharpness. Okay, and the more we work, the more we tend to add more like little brush strokes that at the end it makes the, the painting look, look kind of cartoonish okay the background here a little bit of black Oh, it's up here. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, I think that's it for today. See you all tomorrow. Or Saturday. Oh my god, <laughs> look what I did. It kind of looks like she's chewing, you know, gum. Okay, I like it. Like I said before, oh. Uh, Oh, hello William, Manu, Kathy is asking me what kind of board did you use? Uh, this is not board, this is just a canvas, stretch it to canvas. Uh, okay. Oh, the highlights on the hair, I didn't paint the highlights. Mervad is saying the forehead needs some softness, it looks like an injury. <laughs> okay. But let me see. <laughs> Look at me, there's too much light here. I don't see the color there. I think it's better to see the texture. Oh, the hair, yes. Um, oh, I didn't want to paint the hair. One thing that I, I'm gonna do, okay, uh, it's about the mouth because uh, the lower lip, I, I, I don't got the illusion that it's turning, and I see a lot of light on the lower lip. But I'm gonna make it darker here on this side.
to make it turn. Okay, maybe that's gonna complete. That's gonna complete the illusion. That's turning this could be a highlight here. It's going to be kind of tricky. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you so much, you all, for being here. Okay. Shelly, Shelly, Saints, Shelly Figures. Thank you. Got here late. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Hello, Michael. Hello, Dita. This is a good practice and like I said before I don't want to paint more even taking the risk maybe of not making some corrections or, or leaving the painting like with some areas that maybe I want to see later or tomorrow that are not complete or look off or anything just because I wanna just some simplification on, on let's say on the terrace I don't want I don't want to see a lot of details okay uh, I'm sacrificing a little bit of the likeness for that because for example I don't have this this light here and I'm gonna try to paint it but I don't, at the same time soften that a lot okay yeah I think that's, that's enough. What it is I'm missing that could be pretty important for the face. Okay. Just that. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, been painting an hour and a half. I think that's enough for practice. Uh, thank you so much. See you all next time. Bye. Hola, Sandro. Gracias. Omar Vati saying we need a soft pastel. Oh yeah, it's been a long time since I paint with pastels. Yeah, I will do it, I will do it, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh my God, that's the difficult part when I say that I'm done and I always, always see something more to do. always something more to do okay I'm done